In this presentation, we will take a look at substantive tests of details of account balances. Statistical concepts discussed regarding sampling for internal controls also apply here. In other words, in prior presentations, we've taken a look at statistical sampling methods with regards to testing of controls. And now we're considering the substantive testing. So remember, we're going to be testing the controls. Those are going to be the checks and balances, or we can think of them as checks and balances. Then we're going to hopefully be able to do less substantive testing. However, some of the procedures that we use in order to test the controls, including sampling type of methods, are often often used within the substantive testing. So now we're thinking about the substantive testing. This is the bulk of the testing we typically think of within the audit. You could think of substantive testing more as that type of testing where we're actually digging down into, give me that balance sheet. Let's go straight through the trial balance, cash, accounts receivable, property, plant, and equipment. Start digging into those items, testing those actual transactions related to them. This is where the bulk of the work typically will be. Important uh, determination of sample size. We want the desired confidence level. So what's the confidence level that we want to have? We need the tolerable misstatement. So how much misstatement then is tolerable? Look, remember that we are looking for uh, the material misstatements. And therefore, in order to do a test, we need to then think about what a tolerable uh, misstatement would be, what type of misstatement would be tolerable. And then we want the estimated misstatement. What do we think the estimated misstatement will be? Population can play a large role, a larger role, in some of the sampling techniques used for substantive testing. So we, we noted last time that especially when, when we're considering statistical sampling, the population size might not be as uh, effective or in terms of how large we're going to have our sample size. Here, we're going to say the population can play a larger role in some of the sampling techniques used for the substantive testings as opposed to the testing of control. Misstatements discovered in the audit sample must be projected to the population. So obviously, if we find a misstatement within the sample, we then project that to the population. And there must be an allowance for sampling risk. This is going to be our example then. Information about inventory account balances. We have our information about the inventory. Book value of inventory account balance. So we have a book value of inventory at the 3 million to 300,000. Book value of items selected. Then within our selection, the book value is 110,000. And then when we go through our process, the audit value of items selected comes out to be 106,700. The difference between those two given us the total amount of overstatement uh, observed in the audit sample is 3,300. So the ratio of misstatement in the sample then is 3% because we're going to take that 3,300 and divide it by the book value of the items. So that's going to be the 110,000. So again, total population the 3,300,000, the book value of the sample, the items we have, 110. Given our testing, we have a value of 106,700. The difference between the book value of the sample and our 106,700 is 3,300. Then we're going to compare that 3,300 deviation or difference to the book value of the sample, not the total population. That gives us a 3%. That's the ratio of misstatement in the sample. If we apply the ratio to the entire population, then we get a best estimate of misstatement in inventory of 99,000. So now we're going to take, of course, that 3% misstatement, apply it out to the entire population at 3,300,000 at 3%. That gives us a misstatement that we would project at the 99,000 on the dollar amount. The result of the audit test depends on the tolerable misstatement associated with the inventory account. So if the tolerable misstatement is 50,000, we cannot conclude that the account is fairly stated because our best estimate of the projected misstatement is greater than the tolerable misstatement. So if we said the tolerable misstatement in our example, back up to our example, is 50,000, and we projected here based on this information 99, then we're, we're in trouble here because we have 99 versus the tolerable only being the 50. If the tolerable misstatement is 50,000, we cannot decide that the account is fairly stated because our best estimate of the projected misstatement is larger than the tolerable misstatement.